I want you to complete this sentence. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers will struggle in the playoffs if. Well, yeah, that Bakhtiari news is bad. But I think um, if you're focusing on mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers specifically, um, the pressure and not having Bakhtiari at left tackle, like that's going to impact how much pressure Aaron Rodgers is under. And he's Aaron Rodgers is a great quarterback. It's hard to find a weakness with him, especially how he's playing this year. But all quarterbacks get a little worse when it comes to pressure. But Aaron Rodgers seems to get quite a bit worse when it comes to pressure. So if you look at his mm -hmm. QBR throughout the season, overall, he's number one in the league. You look at it against pressure, he drops down to 12, which is closer to middle of the pack. So if you control for all the quarterbacks, you put in all the plays that all the quarterbacks are in pressure, he's nowhere near the top of the league. He's still somebody who I trust because if you blitz him, which is different than, than pressure, if you blitz him and he right. sees it coming, he can pick you apart. He's really great against the blitz because he understands how to beat the blitz. But if you can pressure him, whether it's through a blitz that he doesn't see coming, a blitz that he doesn't ex expect, or pressure him just with four and potentially play some sort of zone in behind so there's not enough time to necessarily get rid of the ball quickly to your, to your hot reads or to attack the defense downfield, that all quarterbacks obviously struggle against that, but that's the only way that you see Aaron Rodgers' numbers go down. And um, Patrick Mahomes, who we're not talking about right now, but if you look at his difference between pressure and not under pressure, a guy like that, a younger guy who seems to be a little bit more athletic and is a special player, it's not as big. So you can possibly get Aaron Rodgers to play like the 12th best quarterback in the league if you can get pressure on him. <laughs> However, the challenge there is getting pressure on him without also leaving Adams lined up or one-on-one on, -one on right. the outside because then he's going to crush you. Yeah, you know, that's obviously the way you want to get to Aaron Rodgers. And, you know, Don mentioned uh, the Bakhtiari our, our news, and you, you did as well, Charlie. Like, that's huge. We're talking about a left tackle that you can leave on an island. He's like having a great corner, and you kind of scheme away from a guy like David Bakhtiari. So having this situation also plays with the mind and the psyche of a quarterback. You know, Aaron Rodgers is a, is a deep thinker, right? They did a piece on Aaron Rodgers here, and he was talking about certain things that happened with the planes and the missions in the sky and all these different things, all these different conspiracy <laughs> theories. Well, when he doesn't have to think about that left tackle, when he doesn't have to think about the protection of yeah. his blind side, he could be a better quarterback. And so now he's going to have to worry about that. You may have to switch some things around if you're Matt LaFleur. But I think the other thing we have to note in playing the Packers is also their defense. Right? What happens when the team comes to Green Bay and decides to run the football? What if, if it's Chris Carson or if it's Alvin Kamara or some of these teams who can run the football well? How does this defense hold up against them? Because we've seen when teams approach the Green Bay Packers with physicality, it changes who they are. Not only Aaron Rodgers on the offense, like Dom says, dropping to a middle of the pack quarterback, but when the physicality is implemented in games, whether it's the Minnesota Vikings and Dalvin Cook or the Indianapolis Colts and Jonathan Taylor in the second half mm -hmm. of that game, or if you go early on to the season, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers putting pressure and playing man-to-man -man on the outside against Devontae Adams, we've seen physicality change who the Green Bay Packers were. And that's the way to beat this team. That's the way to attack this team. And, and, and Dom is right. Aaron Rodgers and the way that he's played this year, you're truly nitpicking if you want to critique a MVP caliber year by Aaron Rodgers. But that's what's going to happen in the playoffs. It takes one day. It takes 60 right. minutes. And if you aren't great in those 60 minutes, you lose. And the Green Bay Packers have to be aware of the rush, as Dom says. And they also have to be aware of the rush of the other team offensively because I believe that's the way teams will try to attack them and beat them. Yeah, you can't beat Aaron Rodgers just lining up and just playing a static defense. They're, they're going to figure it out. You're going to have to change up the looks. You're going to have to get pressure on them. And to the point that I made a, a moment ago, I was just looking it up uh, about Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes has the second-best QBR in the league. Aaron Rodgers has number one. You put pressure on Aaron Rodgers, he drops to a 32 QBR, which is two above the league, league average, makes him 12th in the league. Patrick Mahomes drops to 73. He's number one in the league. So I know we talk about this MVP <laughs> right. and, or not conversation, but that is the difference in those two players. Aaron Rodgers can still win the MVP, but that is the difference in those two players because Patrick Mahomes is going to get them big plays whether you get pressure on him or not. He's going to break your back, and I'm not yeah. sure that Aaron Rodgers is capable of doing that um, reliably in this situation. And just another thing that since we're talking about those two quarterbacks that I always found incredibly interesting. Last year, before the Super Bowl, I wrote a piece about Patrick Mahomes' weaknesses. He doesn't have any, obviously, but 
I dig, I dug deep into his stats and found that he is actually below league average when it comes to QBR and against um, play action pass or in play action pass, which is crazy because everyone else gets better. And that was true of better. him last year. Yeah. That was true of him his entire NFL career. He was below average in QBR. And even all the way back to college, he was below average in QBR versus um, or when he is doing play action passes. Has nothing to do with what we're talking about. I just think it's interesting, so y'all need to know it. <laughs> Way to do your research, Tom. Good job. Uh, guys, the Packers lead the NFL in scoring with 31.6 points per game. Again, they will clinch the NFC with a win on Sunday against Chicago. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.